Energy Tanazi. Okay, we have them here. Hi, Mr. Tanazi. Nice meeting you, and sorry about delay. And uh, I'm very happy that we finally have you and uh, the MEK strange behavior in Albania attracted media attention uh, and investigator journalists like you uh, uncover some very interesting information about the group. Would you please share them with us and elaborate the situation over there? Well, it was uh, October 2017 when I came across a uh, case of uh, importing cement from abroad and I thought it was a smuggling uh, operation, something safe to investigate because no excise paying uh, goods like uh, Tobago or uh, alcoholic drinks and the like. Uh, investigating this uh, import of uh, cement, I came across uh, a fact that a facility was being constructed in the small town or the big village of Manas, less than 30 kilometers from Duras, part of the Duras municipality. Duras is the second uh, city of Albania and the main port, main harbor. Uh, these Manas this small town is uh, almost uh, the same distance away from Tirana, the capital city, from Rinas, the only uh, civilian airport in my country, and Duras, the main port. Very strategically situated small town. I went there, I saw there was quite a large piece of land, now it is much larger. Uh, they were constructing a fence, uh, they were digging foundations, there were uh, uh, scrapers, uh, uh, cranes, uh, big trucks, dump trucks there. And I went to Duros municipality asking what are they constructing there? Because without a permission from the municipality, you cannot construct. Of course, if it is a b bigger construction site, you need uh, uh, permission from the Premier, signed by the Premier. Anyway, as they, they were very afraid to talk to me. I was born and brought up in Duros. I've got good friends uh, uh, in the ranks of the employees of the Duros municipality, very afraid to speak. What is it? Then they said some Iranians are constructing uh, a facility. What facility? Nobody knew. One week after I began my investigation, I came across a document that uh, the Council for the Development of the Territory, something like this, it is in Albanian, uh, headed by Premier Rama, had issued a permission to construct in Manas a facility for the Iranian community and a company or NGO called FARA, F-A-R-A. -A. I tried to find in our re revenue office, uh, whether it was registered or not, because any company, even uh, foreign embassies, even NGOs have to register there in order to have that uh, evaluated tax, uh, tax uh, number. Uh, every company has got its number. We call it INUS in Albania. And uh, there was no FARA there. I began to uh, ask and they said, uh, Mujahideen, but they are staying at that ex-university campus in Tirana. No, no, they have bought land here. I contacted a couple of public notaries, also peasants there, and they said, yes, we are selling it and they buy a little bit over the, the market. So they paid more than the market. Of course, the price of the land went up then because, you know, offer and uh, the supply, uh, no. And uh, I tried to contact the public uh, face uh, of uh, MEK, Mr. Shain Gobadi. I used his uh, number in Belgium, his number in France. There was a lady who answered, she said, 
in 10, 20 minutes, they will call. They never call. I called and called again, no answer. I send uh, an email to their email address, no answer. They had also a fax number, which is rather rare in Albania because it's obsolete. I send the fax, no answer at all. No answer at all. And I got a little bit insulted because I, I explained in my email that I am so-and-so. I want to ask several questions about this Iranian facility being constructed in Duras municipality. I was born and brought up in Duras. I live now in Duras. No answer. Then, according to the, let us say, law in uh, journalism, I had to listen to the other bell, uh, the tolling of the other bell. I sent an email to the Iranian embassy. Some journalists told me, be careful because uh, they are criminals, Iranian diplomats, they are thugs, they are terrorists, maybe you are risking your life. I said, come on, what can they do in Tirana? I went there and I met uh, Ali Reza Gennavi, uh, first secretary. He was close to retirement gentleman, very polite, uh, no criminal type at all, talking, uh, uh, having small talk with him just to warm up. Uh, uh, even I cracked a joke uh, because what do you want to uh, take? Uh, and I said, the best Iranian tea you've got uh, in the premises of the embassy. And I asked him, I promised him not to censor his words and also not to add my words. I will jot down whatever you say. And in my article, I was uh, faithful to my word. I uh, wrote what he said. I want the, your view, the official view of the Iranian state regarding MEK because they are constructing a facility here and there. He was taken aback, he knew nothing. So those terrorists, those uh, Iranian spies could not uh, consult even open sources, uh, imagine, eh? information from open sources. I talked to him, uh, uh, I published it, and this was my uh, beginning with MEK. Immediately, I was labeled as a stooge of the Mullah's regime. In two years' time, up to now, I got upgraded, uh, a servant of Iranian embassy in Tirana, then I became a, an Iranian spy, then an infamous Iranian spy, and lately I have become a notorious Iranian spy. <laughs> so, if you try to tell the truth about MEK, I'm speaking out of my personal experience, not opinions, what I've seen with my eyes, documents, I laid my hands on them and I've published them, you are labeled at the best a stood at the worst uh, notorious Iranian spy. And this is the problem. They behave in Albania uh, like a kind, like the uh, uh, citizens of great European powers behaved uh, in the late days of the Ottoman Empire. They had that uh, regime of capitulations, so they were not tried by uh, Ottoman courts, the, 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 they had a kind of uh, privileges and uh, immunities. The same uh, goes with MEK. As an Albanian, as an Albanian patriot, I feel myself a second uh, class citizen in my country. Okay, I understand a foreign power occupies my country and they impose their will on me. Of course, I shall be a second uh, class citizen because they occupied my country. But those people of MEK are nobody. They came, officially I mean, to Albania as persons in need of uh, humanitarian protection, on humanitarian grounds. From persons who need protection, they are becoming kind of masters. The way they behave, and I'm speaking of things I've seen with my own eyes. I was at the ground floor of the Ministry of Interiors in downtown Tirana, together with that uh, couple of uh, Iranian-Canadian uh, persons, uh, the, f the father and the mother of uh, uh, an Iranian uh, girl 
Miren Enuma, who is uh, in the ranks of MK, uh, Mr. Mohammad, he was the father. And uh, uh, I was, uh, I showed my ID card as a journalist, and I was kept there in front of a counter. Then came a certain Tehzad Safari with an Albanian lawyer, a lady with red hair. They showed the card and they went upstairs. So nobody, uh, a person in uh, need of protection, went first floor, or second floor in the Ministry of Interiors of Albania, as if they were masters there. The general secretary of the ministry, he is number two in the ministry, at the time was Mr. Adriatic Mema. He was a classmate of mine for eight years. I phoned him, I, he was going to a meeting uh, with the premier, uh, standing uh, uh, near his car, and, I, and he said to me, leave them, Georgie, don't poke your nose uh, into their affairs, leave them, they are strange people. Imagine, a classmate of mine for eight years, would not give me the privilege to go upstairs. They showed an ID, I don't know what ID it was, but they went upstairs, as if they were in their own home, in their own house. Very strange and very insulting. The way they behave there, it is very strange. Uh, Duros police didn't want to accept uh, the papers to sue them, uh, by Mr. Mohammadi. Every police officer, even people I have met, I, I worked with them because I worked for eight years as a custom officer in Douros Harbor, even then they were afraid to uh, accept uh, 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 the papers to sue them. Of course, uh, 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 the affair was uh, stopped, etc., etc. They couldn't be. Uh, uh, sent to court anyway by, by, by Mr. Mohammadi. Anyway, uh, the police officers were afraid of that. I pay my taxes to be protected by police officers. And police officers are afraid of a bunch of people. Most of them are almost senior citizens. This was very strange. When I accompanied, I have accompanied several uh, foreign journalists, uh, uh, one from uh, Agence France Press, another one from The Guardian, another one uh, from uh, the Independent, also a Norwegian guy from the best sold paper RD in uh, Norway, uh, to the camp, I had all these problems. We then called the police. Okay, I called the police, uh, local police in Manza, and uh, the officer was, we had worked together in Durosport, he said, Georgie, you are a smart guy, try to extricate yourself from the situation. Try to leave. I, I pay taxes, I, I said. I want your help. Come on, try to leave. Don't mix with that bunch of people. And he was a police officer, experienced, at least 25 years in uh, the police corps of Albania. State police, not local police, the state police. So th those people behave very strange, and they try to impose their will. Of course, they stand their Iran. I don't care uh, about their struggle against the uh, Mullah regime. They will bring democracy to Iran. They, they will bring paradise on earth to Iran. This is your, their problem. The way they behave to Albania, the way they damage my country is quite a problem. The way they treat uh, the villagers or let us call them townsfolk of Manus, where they have their Ashraf tree camp, is uh, something outrageous. For example, uh, they are indoctrinating little kids, teenagers, less than 18 years old, uh, telling them how the mullahs murder people, how the mullahs uh, beat people, how uh, Bashi militia uh, rape uh, Iranian girls, etc., etc. And then they explain to those poor kids who cannot show Iran on the map that 90% uh, of the uh, Iranian people is uh, against the Mullah regime, 90% of the regular army, Artesh, is against Mullah regime. There is only this uh, revolutionary guard, Sepah, uh, uh, which is uh, kind of... Uh, 
how can I say, a protecting force of the regime, but it is uh, badly armed, uh, very little trained. There is a mili uh, Bashi militia, but they are rebel. They are just uh, thugs with uh, assault weapons and nothing else. So if we enter Iran, in 10 days or a fortnight, we reach Tehran. Imagine now explain, uh, filling the head of a kid with such things. Albanian peasants who cannot show Iran on the map and telling them that you are our friends, uh, a friend in need is a friend indeed, we shall take the villas with swimming pool from the mullahs who suck the blood of the Iranian people and uh, I shall, we shall give them to our Albanian friends and things like this. Thank you very much. When you, when you mention that they ruin your country or they're damaging your country, uh, you mean uh, because Albania, you know, at least to me, was like European country and over there law and order should be, uh, you know, in charge, not a small group, especially foreigner group, come over there and run the country. And you, you said something about even state police and their behavior was kind of strange to you, yeah? It was, uh, if I can make a comparison, just like the Shah police during the British occupation of half of Iran. There was the Shah police or gendarmerie, what was it? But uh, the Brits called the pips. They were masters of Iran. Uh, our police cannot touch them. We had that uh, uh, virus uh, pandemia and we had the lockdown. According to the law, I have a journalist card and I could go from Tehran to Doors. I could uh, travel during the curfew hours. But there were police or even uh, army uh, roadblocks. I had to show my ID as a journalist, to show uh, my ID as an Albanian citizen, to show the papers of my car, whether I own it or not, and uh, also a driving license. And then they let me pass. When I was uh, in one of those roadblocks between uh, Doros and Tirana, the capital city, I saw a green SUV, a uh, rather old one. It is used by MEK to patrol in uh, Manza and out, not only in their camp, uh, even in the village or small town of Manza. They showed something and they crossed the roadblock. So, an Albanian citizen, a journalist, is searched, papers, documents, permission, ID. They show something and they pass. I am a second class citizen in my country. Imagine it. You are an American. I come uh, to America as a person in need of protection and the police harasses you. Paper, this, curfew, blah, blah, blah. I show something, an ID document I don't know, and they pass. Oh. I've got more eyes than an uh, American citizen. It's outrageous. One example. The other one. Uh, they uh, distributed leaflets in Manza. There are several villages, not uh, only the small town or the big village of Manza, with my face on it, with a telephone number, and they explained to the poor peasants, local or townsfolk, that I was a dangerous, uh, very dangerous, sorry, very dangerous Iranian spy. So if they saw me, they should call this number, not come uh, near me. Can you imagine? Even Albanian police cannot do, declare you wanted that easy. They need, uh, what we call them, uh, officer police, you saw it. Uh, an officer of uh, ju judiciary police, they need his uh, or her signature. Then uh, not every police officer can declare you wanted, etc., etc., because we have some human rights in Albania. They put their leaflets uh, throughout uh, Manus and uh, nearby villages with my face. Wanted in my country, but by a bunch of people who have come to my country as persons who need protection. A very question mark. A very question mark. I don't care what they do to Iran. I am an Albanian. What I care is they cannot treat my country as a playground, as devil's playground. No, I am against it, I will do my best, I will do my bit to be against it. 
This is one aspect. There are several others. Maybe, but I need proof, they have engaged in money laundering because they have used uh, Albanians to open franchises of Vodafone and also franchises of uh, uh, what Turks call Doviz or exchange, uh, money exchanges. And it is a textbook example that money exchanges are used also for money laundering or something else. We in Albania have got very tough laws against money laundering. When I wanted to send 3,000 euros to my daughter studying in Germany, in Jakobs University in Bremen, I had to fill a lot of forms to declare uh, the origin of those 3,000 uh, euros. They have constructed their camp, which uh, using a conser uh, conservative evaluation costs at least 100 million uh, British pounds, land, facility, uh, furniture, etc., etc. Plus the cost to uh, have the facilities, water, electricity, internet, plus the cost to feed, uh, let us say, 3,000, and this is a big question mark whether they are 3,000 or not. So how this money enters Albania? What bank do they use? Do they use Western Union, MoneyGram? Do they use that Havala system? How this money enters Albania? We have very tough anti-laundering uh, laws. They do not work for them. I challenge that uh, woman, Mariam Rajave, please show me a bank account the way uh, you have used to uh, bring to Albania this sum of money, or at least part of it, not 100 million pounds, but 5, 10, 12 million pounds. Especially no. with her background, what happened in Paris or France with the you know, police getting involved and finding some cash money in uh, her apartment or her house. But you, you said you are uh, suspected that there is some money laundering going on. Are you pursuing this? Are you going to follow up with it? Uh, it's difficult because I'm here not to tell my opinion, but facts. We had a case, our police, uh, because our police uh, randomly arrests uh, Iranian, uh, ethnic Iranians. Uh, if they are uh, just trying to cross through Albania to Western Europe, to live there, to work there, they are arrested. If they try to come to Tirana uh, by air, they are kicked back even before the pandemic. But we had a case, an Iranian woman was uh, trying to smuggle through Rina's airport, the only civilian airport in Albania, a large sum of pounds in 20 pounds notes. They are gradually getting out of circulation in UK to UK. She was arrested and then nothing on the press. I tried to follow her case because but it was a little bit difficult because I had followed the case of another Iranian who disappeared. Then uh, he was charged with helping another Iranian. He was uh, one of the defectors to get smuggled into Albania. So I left it at that. We have a case, an Iranian woman trying to send money in cash over the 10,000 euros limit. This is uh, in Albanian law. You can transfer cash up to 10,000 euros so so she was arrested and this was it strange enough the media run by mek kept mum no words at all they time and again speak of iranian terrorists arrested in albanian iranian spies arrested in albanian uh, uh, iranian uh, diplomats being uh, kicked out of Albania because they were spies, they were terrorists, they, they worked for revolutionary guard, including the, uh, the uh, uh, Iranian ambassador. In this case, not one word, not one word. So they use the Albanian law not as something obligatory, but as something which, if it suits to me, okay, I obey the law. If it doesn't suit, I just bypass the law. This is typical of 
European uh, citizens in the late days of the Ottoman Empire, when the Ottoman Empire was called the sick man of Bosphor. Now, my country is becoming the sick man of Adriatic Sea. And this is very insulting. This is very insulting. Thank you so much. Uh, if you do a favor and keep us posted, you know, with what you're doing later on, and if you find out something, share it with us, please. Uh, our viewer, uh, thank you and, uh, on Facebook, and they appreciate what you did, especially those that they've been a member of this uh, organization before, and right now they are defected or separated. They said the money that MEK spent on bribing and, you know, uh, just doing the pe uh, police or other uh, government member is more than what they spent for 2,000 member in Albania. As you said, since I don't know exactly, we just, you know, share the information until you get something solid. I've got a lot of information, but uh, you are short on time, I see it. Okay, thank you anyway. Hopefully we will see you uh, next time in another program and we, we will give you more time to explain those for us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a lovely weekend.